Robert Dills gilt als einer der weltweit bekanntesten Vertreter des neurolinguistischen Programmierens. Zeit seines Schaffens begleitet ihn auch die Kritik an der in der Trainingsbranche verbreiteten Kommunikations- und Veränderungstechniken. Managerseminare sprach mit dem Preisträger des Life Achievement Awards 2015 über die Reputation von NLP. Many criticized that NLP is lacking a sound scientific foundation. Um, what do you think about this criticism and how do you handle it and what do you answer your critics? First of all, I, I always, I, this is one of these kind of strange things about, about NLP. I mean, NLP was based on linguistics, which has a scientific foundation, neurology, which has a scientific foundation, programming. So all of the roots of NLP are coming from that. However, and I think that this is probably where the, the biggest whole challenge of all of this comes in, NLP never said we are an objective science. The definition of NLP from its very, very, very beginning, right, when it, the first, and the, and the title of the first book is called The Study of the Structure of Subjective Experience, right, not objective reality. So the first thing you have to realize is that Bandler and Grinder never intended NLP to be an objective science. It's the study of the structure of subjective experience. And if I reorganize that subjective experience, things will happen in this, you know, objective outer world. Now, so, so first of all, Bandler and Grinder never put emphasis on that because they said the map is not the territory. You know, that's the first principle of NLP. So how can we be saying, well, this is the really the right map if we're saying, well, the map is not the territory. They're saying, they always said, what Bandler and Grinder said from the very beginning, which started this dilemma, was they said, we'll tell you right now, everybody, what we have to say is lies. It's all lies, because the map is not the territory. I said, but they're very useful lies. If they're useful, use them. It's like a tool, right? Now, Again, that being said, I think that's where NLP started to get that reputation. And, and Bandler and Grinder were very, this, this time that NLP started was a very revolutionary time. I mean, look at Steve Jobs, right? It was, if you remember the, 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 the very classic um, you know, advertisement for Macintosh, it's the woman throwing the hammer through the picture of Big Brother, right? So it was anti-establishment. And they viewed this academic you know, research as establishment. So they were very, I mean, they were very um, rebellious against that. And I think that's why it got that reputation, is that the founders themselves kind of went, Phew. now, it's, that being said, I have done and have been involved in lots of research studies. And I, so I'm kind of going, what do you mean there's no research? We researched the spelling strategy. We researched the allergy technique. Uh, we researched, you know, all, uh, you know, eye movements. I mean, today, like I say, you know, mirroring is accepted as, you know, in, in psychology as a, the, the standard way of getting rapport. It used to be people would say, well, there's no proof of that. But my point is when you're a coach, that's, you don't care about that. What you care about is I have this person in front of me. I'm going to do whatever I can do to help empower that person to be in charge, like Erickson, you know, to be in charge of their own, their own experience. And then who knows what miracle might come. And I think that's, that's why there's that kind of dilemma. NLP has not been particularly you know, interested in, in, in the scientific research because it's not based on scientific research. It's based upon individual subjective experience, individual relation. And then, of course, you have the, if, if NLP was only technique, right, and a robot did the technique, then the statistics would be absolutely meaningful and the only thing to pay any attention to, just like, like medicine. I'm just going to give you this pill, that's it. But NLP is not based on techniques. It, is, it creates techniques, it creates tools, but the, the, the skillfulness of the user, the relationship of the people, You know, that, the curiosity that is brought between the two, this magic of empowerment, that's what, that's what makes something work. Especially when everybody says, there's, there's nothing to do. What is uh, your observation? How is the reputation of NLP in the business world? 
The reputation of NLP in the business world is actually probably better than it is in other worlds, uh, partially because business people go, well, we, we don't really care about the statistics scientifically. We just, will it work, right? Does it work? And that's, that's what NLP's first criteria is always, is it useful? If it's useful, use it. If it doesn't, and it doesn't work, don't use it. It's like any tool, right? If, it, if you have an iPhone, if it works for what I want, I'm going to use it. If I don't, I'll get something else, right? That's, that's the basic idea of NLP, which I think is like business. Find what works, use it. If it stops working, you know, go somewhere else. But I think, and I think it's important to acknowledge about, about NLP that NLP in business also has a, can have a mixed reputation, not actually, interestingly, not because of this science, but because of the users, right? And what can happen with something like NLP is that people get a little bit of NLP and they say, I'm doing NLP. There's, you know, what is NLP? First of all, there's no one NLP, right? I say there's many NLPs. You know, there's many different schools of NLP. There's different styles of training. There's different people that use it and they use some part of it and not all of it. And so what happens is you, you start labeling what if one person it's kind of like I was saying about modern science. What do you mean modern science? There is no modern science. There's that person's interpretation of some kind of, you know, uh, theories and other things. But same with NLP. And the problem is people misuse it. Right? They use it, it, it like any, because NLP has so focused on tools, like any tool, any tool, not just NLP, any tool, like a hammer, I can use it to build a house for somebody, I can use it to make a chair, or I can hit somebody on the head with it. So some people take NLP and they hit people on the head with it. Or they use it not as a whole one, right? Not as a way to contribute to the, you know, the, the benefit of others, but to benefit themselves, right? Seduction techniques. That's not, I mean, yes, you can use NLP for seduction, but that's not NLP. It's not, you know, it's one person's misuse of, of a technology. And so that, that's part of my mission is how to bring NLP into the world in a responsible way with integrity, this idea of systemically, you know, really understanding its consequences holistically. And then at the same time, um, how do we acknowledge where are the possible, where can it be misused? Where are the shadows? How to help people be able to recognize that? And rather than throw it all out, you know, really take what's good and use what's good. There's a lot, a lot of good in NLP.